Howdy. This is Whitney Neves from out in Northern Oklahoma, which is a blessed land. Today I am reviewing a case from the lower extremity module with a particular focus on tendinopathy. Our patient is a 65-year-old retired female, and for simplicity's sake, let's just call her Vance. Vance is a grandmother who enjoys cleaning her and her daughter's houses and playing with her grandchildren. However, when she came in for treatment, she was extremely limited in her ability to do both of those things secondary to a burning and painful sensation in her heels bilaterally. You can see her photo score below. Vance's primary pain, or P1, was the pain in both of her heels. Initially, she only had pain in her right heel, but later that same pain was present in her left heel as well. The pain in her heels was a constant yet variable burning pain that was 8 out of 10 at its worst and upon examination and 1 out of 10 at best. She reported the pain wrapping around her heel as well as going up her Achilles tendon. Aggravating factors were walking and trying to tend slash play with her grandkids. Easing factors were rest and stretching her feet. P2 was a different story with the pain being intermittent and variable. It was a deep pain in her right low back and buttock. It was only an issue after performing two hours of housework, and at the two-hour mark, it would, quote, stop her in her tracks and spasm. She maintained that she was not concerned with it because as long as she kept her work within two hours, it didn't bother her. She had it under control. If she did overdo it and the pain, quote, caught her, she would ease it by spending the rest of the day in bed and it would be better by the next day. Here are some areas and structures that came to mind upon hearing her complaints. Obviously not much came to mind. Here are some hypotheses that I was considering as her history unfolded. An important thing that was brought to my attention was that when symptoms are bilateral, your mind should automatically consider the spinal cord. The reason both tendinitis and tendinosis are listed is because after only reviewing the chart, we didn't know how long the symptoms had been bothering her. During the interview, we found that it was a long-standing problem and the associated dates with the onset of this problem. P1 aggravating factors were being on her feet all day with eating factors being rest and stretching. P1 onset was immediately and gradually relieved as she rested and stretched. It never completely went away though. P2 aggravating factors were doing housework and other standing ADL for more than two hours. Eating factors were either keeping her activities under two hours or lying down and sleeping if the pain caught her. Vance reported that she had to change positions all night to get to sleep due to P1. Her heels were so tender that even laying them on the feet hurt them enough to keep her awake. Here you can see the dates of onset of P1. Her pain was gradually increasing and her history was unremarkable. As I said before, her history was relatively unremarkable, and you can see her diagnostic test results here. Her asterisk sign for P1 was easily decided on. She had immediate pain upon standing and walking. Her P2 asterisk sign was decidedly harder, as you will see later. Her pain was only reproducible after two hours of housework. As I will mention later, she wasn't interested in having her back, or her P2, treated at that time. Healy's tendonitis was ruled out due to the length of time from onset to present. Here we have the rest of my hypotheses. 
Her condition was moderately severe with a moderate to severe irritability. Her symptoms would start to settle down immediately upon sitting or lying down. In my mind, this was acting a lot like bilateral tendinitis. Uh, P1 was consistent and easily reproducible. Answer those questions. I really wanted to rule out a central nervous system problem as her symptoms were bilateral. Lumbar range of motion and a quadrant test would help rule out that, as well as a radiculopathy and mechanical low back pain. You can see the logic written at the bottom of the slide for measuring her P1 upon standing and walking. Vance was unable to complete a functional squat secondary to pain one. Her lumbar spine was screened and cleared. Her knees were cleared as well. All tested myotomes, dermatomes, and deep tendon reflexes were normal. Some, referred to in the slide, were deferred secondary to P1. Here are some more of the physical exam findings after the exam, my primary hypothesis was that Vance had bilateral Achilles tendinosis. The back had been screened, which helped to discourage my secondary hypotheses. Her symptoms were reproducible in non-weight-bearing positions by palpation, active, and passive range of motion. Unfortunately for our patient, a stem was in order as well as eccentric contractions of the affected tendons. Stretching was also employed. The patient was willing to undergo treatment when the logic and benefits were explained to her. Ice and IFC were used to decrease pain sensation post-treatment. The change in our asterisk sign was not positive that day, which in lieu of the nature of our quote unquote diagnosis was to be expected. Our optimistic prognosis was that she'd recover in four weeks our plan was simple, cause an inflammatory response to aid in tendon healing. Her second visit was exciting for her and encouraging for us. She reported that she was sore after treatment, but the soreness went away the night after treatment. She reported the pain as a 4 or 5 out of 10. She adequately demonstrated her home exercise program and reported that exercises weren't too easy or too difficult. She was doing better with walking and pain was only a four or five out of 10 upon standing and walking. And these are also her asterisk signs. What we did the first time really uh, improved her symptoms. So like my grandpa used to always say, shut up and get back to work. No, I guess a more adequate thing would be, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So we did the same thing. Visit three, Vance indicated that she didn't feel as sore as she did after her first treatment and second treatment. Her symptoms were improving and she was very excited to report it. The pain which initially had wrapped around her heels was now only in her Achilles. Regarding her asterisk sign, her pain with walking was reported to be a 2 out of 10. This is half of what it was during her previous visit. During this third visit, Vance reported that she was willing to do some exercises for her back. I was not present for the exchange, but she was put on some stabilizing and strengthening exercises for her back and core. We have been keeping the course of her treatment fairly regular with added exercises that we have slowly increased in difficulty as she has tolerated them. She showed great improvement with one setback in the pain after a hard weekend. And even with that setback, she has shown an impressive improvement throughout her treatments with her asterisk signs for both P1 and P2. P1 went from an 8 out of 10 pain upon standing to a 0 out of pain standing and walking. P2 asterisk sign, although not well explained, went from a pain that stopped her after two hours of housework to her being able to perform six straight hours of housework without pain. Not much more to say about P2, except who would want to do more than six hours of housework? I'm 
Treating Vance was an interesting experience. Uh, I was involved with treating P1 and the logic behind the treatments. I was a little out of the loop with the treatment for P2. The treatment was effective at changing her aspect size, but I didn't really know why or what we were trying to address exactly. Are there any questions that anyone has about Vance? And when I ask this question, it's rhetorical, so don't answer it. Don't ask me questions. 